All right, so step one is going to include adjusting the brightness levels of the tonal ranges in the image and doing some dodging and burning. So let's start off by duplicating this layer here so we can work non-destructively. I'm gonna go ahead and click right here to duplicate it and double click here to rename this brightness plus contrast. And let's go up to colors and select brightness and contrast to make adjustments to how bright it is. And I wanna make it darker and I want to increase the contrast. So we're gonna transform this image from night to day. And this is the first step in doing so. All right, I think that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. The next thing I wanna do is dodging and burning. So if you're not familiar with dodging and burning, it is making part of your image brighter and other parts of your image darker, but instead of doing it like we just did, which is a global edit or applying the edit to the entire image, we have a dodge and burn tool that will allow us to brush on the edit exactly where we want it. So it's going to be inside of this tool group right here, and the keyboard shortcut is right here, Shift plus D. So once you activate that, you will then have a brush tool automatically selected, which you can resize according to what you need to apply the edit where you want it. Now, in order to use either the dodge or the burn, you need to go into the tool options and scroll all the way down to the bottom here. And then you have your type of edit, dodge or burn. So dodge is going to make parts of your image brighter based on where you paint on your image. Burning, it's kind of like a sunburn. It's going to make part of your image darker. So I'm gonna select burn because I want to make this part of the image right here darker. We can also target a tonal range within the image as well. We have three choices, shadows, midtones, and highlights. Since this part of the image is very bright, that's part of the highlight. So I'm gonna select the highlights. You can also adjust the exposure or how much of the edit is going to be applied at one time. So 100 exposure is going to apply that edit all at one time. If you drop it down to 50, then it's going to apply half of that edit at one time. And of course, 25 would be a quarter. So if you want to slowly build up your edit from brighter to darker, darker to brighter, then you can adjust your exposure and then blend it in slowly with multiple strokes to get the effect that you want. Now for this image, I don't mind applying it all at one time. I don't need to blend it in. So I'm just gonna begin painting in this area and you can see the highlights are now getting darker. I don't mind applying it on the skin as well since we're going from day to night. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and darken this up just a little bit more. Once I release my mouse button, I can then apply that edit again exactly where I want it. This time I'm just gonna stick on her outfit here and I'm gonna do it probably one or two more times until I get it as dark as needed. Let's try it one more time, maybe on the skin over here a little bit and let's try one more. All right, we can now move on to step two which is desaturating and colorizing the image. So again, we're going to duplicate the layer and let's call this sat plus colorize. Let's start off with desaturating the image by going to colors, desaturate and selecting desaturate. Go ahead and click okay. Now we're going to apply a color. So we're gonna go up to colors and click on colorize. And this is the default color here. That's not the color I want. This is the color that I'm going to use. So if you wanna use the exact same color, this is the hexadecimal number here. So go ahead and type that into this area here. Go ahead and click okay. And now we have our blue color light. All right, let's go ahead and duplicate this one more time. And the reason why we're duplicating so many layers is because we want to work non-destructively. That way, if we make a mistake or if we don't like the direction of our edit, we can go back to one of these other layers here versus starting all over from scratch. So we're gonna apply a levels adjustment. So I'm gonna call this layer levels. And then I'm gonna go up to colors to select my levels tool. So if you're not familiar with levels, the levels tool will allow you to make adjustments to the tonal range of your image. We have our blacks and shadows over here on this side, the midtones are in the middle, 
And then we have our highlights and whites over here on the right. And then we have these little markers on the ends. So this would be the black point, which is pure black, and the white point, which is pure white. And then we have our midtone here in the middle. It's kind of hard to see in this theme that I'm using in GIMP. So hopefully you can see that. What we want to do is we want to grab the white point here and drag it to the left. If you're not able to grab that little marker right there, you can go ahead and adjust the white point from here. You can actually type in a number if you want to. And once you click your tab key, you will then see the updates on your image. So what we're basically doing with the white point at this position is we're reducing the amount of tonal ranges or the number of tonal ranges in the image from 256 down to 50. So that's a little bit too much. I'm going to bring my white point over here to maybe right about 145 or so. And that's going to brighten up the image, which is what I want at this point. It, I find it's a little bit too dark here, so I want to brighten it up just a little bit. But I'm now going to grab the midpoint here or the midtone marker here and just darken it up just a little bit. So once you're happy with everything, go ahead and click OK. All right, so for step four, we are going to make a selection of her frames and mask them so we can begin applying the glow around her glasses. So we're going to start off by grabbing the original layer here. We're going to duplicate this one. We're going to click and drag this all the way up to the top. You can also use these arrows here as well to move the layers accordingly. I'm going to go ahead and rename this Select Plus Mask. So this is probably the hardest part of this edit, making a selection of these frames. They're pretty thin and you have multiple selection tools to make that selection. So which one should you use? Well, I would recommend using whichever one you're comfortable using. But the one that I recommend for this particular edit is the quick mask mode. So the quick mask mode will allow you to paint on the image to make a selection. So you can either activate the quick mask mode by clicking on this little icon down here in the bottom left or use the keyboard shortcut, which is shift plus Q. Once you activate quick mask mode, it will apply a red overlay on your image. So anything in red is not part of the selection. So there's no selection at this point. But once you grab your paintbrush tool with the letter P and begin painting with white or black, you can begin adding or removing from your selection. So with white activated in the foreground, I will begin making my selection by painting in the area that I want to add to the selection. Now, when I deactivate the quick mask mode with shift plus Q, it will give me my selection. Okay, I'm going to go back, shift plus Q again, and I'm going to, let's undo that a couple times to reset that. So what I recommend for this image is setting the hardness down to zero in the tool options and then adjusting your brush size just a little bit larger than the frames. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here just to make this a little bit easier to see. And then if you have a steady hand, you should be able to paint over the frames like so and make your selection. Now, originally, this took me about eight to ten minutes. So I'm not going to take up more of your time than is needed. So I'm going to go ahead and deactivate quick mask mode and I'm going to deselect with control shift plus A. Now that you know how to make a selection, you're going to then apply a mask. So actually, let me go ahead and put that back. We're going to click right here and then we're going to click on selection and click add to add that mask within that selection. So the only thing that's part of this layer right now is this area here that I selected. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that and I'm going to cheat a little bit because I did this previously. And remember, I don't want to take up more of your time than is needed. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this layer and move it into this image. Once I release, it should then be activated with that layer mask. So I'm going to go ahead and rename this one and let's delete that. Okay, I'm going to zoom all the way out with Command or Control, Shift plus J. All right, step five is inverting the color of our frames. So we're going to go ahead and duplicate this layer. We're going to right click on the layer mask and select apply 
layer mask. Then we're going to go up to colors and select invert. And I'm going to rename this invert. And then for step six, we're going to reselect the frames and apply a light blue color to them and make them glow. All right, so reselecting the frames now will be super duper easy because what we can do is right click on this layer mask and select mask to selection and boom, we have our frames reselected. How cool is that? I love it. All right, let's go back up here and select this top layer. We're going to create a new layer and let's call it frame glow. Make sure you have transparency set and click OK. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here with my zoom tool so I can actually see inside of that selection because what we need to do now is we need to grab our bucket fill tool and fill it in with a color. So I'm going to go ahead and select my foreground color swatch here and I'm going to choose this light blue color. If you want to use the same color, this is the hexadecimal number here. Now I chose this by using my eyedropper tool and selecting a color from her skin and that's the color I ended up with. All right, so once you have that selected, you can go ahead and click on the inside of your selection here to fill it in with that color. Let's deselect with Command or Control, Shift plus A. All right, so those frames are looking pretty sad right now, so let's go ahead and fix that by blurring them a little bit and that will create the glow. So we're going to go up to Filters, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and then you can adjust the size of the X and Y axis to whatever your heart desires. So I'm going to go maybe right around 15 to 17, maybe something like that. All right, let's go ahead and click OK. And we now have our glowing glasses. OK, I'm going to zoom out again. All right, we can now move on to step seven, which involves applying some of the glow to our skin. Since it should be reflected onto her skin, it's not just going to glow around the frame here. It should also light up her skin as well. So we're going to create a new layer. Let's call it Skin Glow. And then with that same light blue color, we're going to grab our paintbrush tool and we're going to paint inside of the frames and along the outline of the frames. So I'm just going to paint inside like so. Doesn't look really good right now, but we will fix that in just a minute. So go ahead and readjust your brush size as needed to cover more area quicker. So I'm going to just start on the inside here and then I will go along the outside of the frame as well. All right, let's go ahead and zoom in on her lips here because I think we should apply some highlights to her lips as well because that glow might be coming down here and brightening up the lips a little bit as well. So I'm going to go ahead and create a smaller brush and I'm just going to do a soft outline right here and maybe another one over here. So I'm just kind of guessing where that glow is going to affect the rest of her face and maybe a little bit more on the bottom here. Now again, it's not looking pretty, but we will fix that and make an adjustment with a layer mask to fine tune our edit so it looks a little bit more realistic and blended in. And let's go up to modes here and change it from normal to soft light. And this is going to blend in with the layers below to allow that texture to come through and it's going to brighten her skin at the same time. Boom. There we go. So that looks a lot better now. And if you think it's too much, you can always adjust your opacity lower. And the one thing I want to do is I want to fix those lips because it's a little bit too bright on her lips. So I'm going to go ahead and apply a white layer mask because white adds and black removes. So now that that's added, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here on her lips. I'm going to grab my paintbrush tool with the letter P. And what I want to do now is I want to paint with black. But in this case, I don't want to apply it at 100%. So I'm going to adjust the opacity down lower so I can slowly remove the highlights and blend it in a little bit better. I'm going to make a larger brush and then I'm just going to continue painting in this area with multiple strokes to blend that in. So we still have a little bit of a highlight there, but it's not as intense as it was before since we're painting with a gray or at a lower opacity. So I'm just going to blend this in a little bit, take a look at the before and after, 
and continue adjusting as needed. All right, to continue elevating your GIMP editing skills, make sure to check out that playlist right there to the right to learn more special effects you can create in GIMP.